Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, life coach, leadership coach, motivational speaker, and health coach. And welcome to another episode, Life's a Shuffle. And of course, today is Thursday and it's Freestyle Thursday. It is October 1st. Time is flying by. I don't like, I don't think you would use the word flying by because the construct of time is what we give power to time. Um, I had a client this morning earlier, I was training and he says, man, time flies by so fast. I said, you know what? I kind of figured out a long time ago that uh, months go by like hours. No, days go by like hours and months and months go by like uh, weeks and years go by like months. That's how fast time flies, right? Because there's always so much we want to do and get done. And you always say, not enough time, not enough time. And it usually boils down to the fact we want to do so much, but we're not focused on what specific we want to do. So we get caught up with there's not enough time left. If we really just focus on specifically what we want to do, then we'll have plenty of time. But we want to do everything, right? Like, <laughs> you know, this week has been a rough, rough week for me. Um, I've been very, very to point where very down, upset with myself. Um, you know, as human beings, we have ups and downs and we have turmoil in our life. And it can be... Um, you know, when you go through something traumatic, some people express it verbally, some people express it by writing it down, some people go into depression, some people go into anxiety, whatever your specific way of dealing with problems or issues, everybody still deals with it different. For me, I internalize my stress. My stress comes out in my body language, be uh, I'm I'm tired or I'm frustrated and uh, I don't like where I feel. Like I've been working nonstop, you know, getting ready to move and, and train clients and Doing all these these wonderful things, which are if I just that's what I said in my mind two days ago. I said if I just do these wonderful things, it changes the energy. Because I keep saying I'm tired, and I'm tired, I'm tired. It's just what we hold in mind tend to manifest. If I hold I'm tired in my mind, it will manifest in reality in my body language and the way I show up. I'm tired all the time, so I tried to change, reformat that, and that's what people need to do. Is that when you come to a situation where you're holding some of these thoughts in your mind, the only way to transcend them is change the thought, right? So if you hold the thought, I'm tired, or I'm stressed, then it tends to manifest in the body and outwardly things you're seeing. So I, I've been going through a lot of turmoil internally, and I've just got to the point where I'm unhappy. For the last few days and last two weeks, I've been very unhappy with myself. The fact that I'm not showing the 100%, all, I like to show up a certain way every day, regardless of how many hours of sleep I had, I want to be 100% for myself and also for my clients and just I get more energy that way so I just get to the point now where I'm looking at all these things I want so the idea was I'm looking at fish tanks I'm looking at remote control airplanes I'm looking at remote control cars I'm gonna get back in my hobby again that I like doing because the idea being is that it would probably some temporary happiness but I always ask myself okay if I get back involved in these things which I do do I really need it now and how form happiness will provide me and, um, you know, you're going through some personal issues and in, in relationships to kind of make it even even adds more to, to the turmoil internally. And, you know, and usually with your p- person next to you or close by, you tend to blow up at them because you're frustrated with certain things happening or you act a certain way. So I just been very unhappy with myself. I mean, almost down to the point where it's like I just don't want to do anything. I want this whole moving situation to be done, but it's getting there. You know, when you're in the process of doing something, it doesn't feel well. So the house we're going to purchase in uh, Bellingham, Washington is sold and we purchased it and that's done. Um, it was a headache. I wish I was a multimillionaire. You just put down, boom, here's the cash. You know, you have to worry about credit and all this stuff like this. But it was amazing to uh, finally bought the house. Um, so that's definitely one thing off the plate. Um, is packing the stuff, getting ready to get out of here. Um, you don't realize how much stuff you really have, even though it's organized, how much stuff you really have up until you open everything up and say, oh my goodness, this is what I have. So that's kind of my story, what's going on with myself this week. Um, I'm just not the normal Ron I like being, and I'm not, I'm feeling really, really down. And um, not the fact I'm leaving, but because I'm just tired of just this constant monotonous of working, you know, last 30 days straight, or pretty much no day off, just doing something um, to get myself ready to leave. And for me, I realized, and then you ask guys self question out there, when you're going through an issue, how do you react? Because how you react 10 years ago or five years ago or six months ago is how you react. I react where I need to release and get away because that's how I normally react. So, you know, enough about this. Gloria, tell me what's going on with you. Um, you know, listening to you, I just realized when you we were talking about um, – all this negativity that was happening or all these thoughts that you were going through. I'm actually, I'm reading this book and I'm, 
on that chapter of turning the negativity to positive. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much did just what I think you're supposed to. Um, that, that That's what it was on the book that I was reading that. Um, it takes practice to have that kind of, or to, you know, change your mindset. It really does. Um, because not, not everyone has that and not everyone realizes that. So that's why when you start feeling negative or when you have all these negative thoughts, that's when you start, you know, getting anxiety, um, feeling distress. You don't know what to do. You're just so overwhelmed. But when you turn that negative negativity to positive, it's funny how your body, just everything that you feel, it just, it changes immediately. Like the energy changes. Yeah, it does. And I, you know? I, the reason why I, this book I was reading, I just finished it called I, like I, then I, which is E-Y-E, -E, I of the I, from which no, no pathway is hidden by David R. Hawkins, my favorite author, obviously. Um, it's why I like the last chapter is what so we're only subject to what we hold in mind. So this object, which is OB, then subject was U, sorry, S U B. Subject is more emotional. So object is more like uh, literal. So I was subjecting myself to what I was holding myself in mind. So mine is if I'm tired, a mine is I'm down, mine is I'm upset. Um, my mindset is I'm frustrated. All this negativity is showing up because I'm holding all that stuff in mind. So I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm in total control of my own thoughts. So I said to myself, which I learned in one book called Letting Go. No, sorry. Yeah, Letting Go. What I said to myself is, is I'm an infinite human being and I'm not subject to that. Because what this really are, our egoic, our conscious thoughts are showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up like a broken record, right? So what I tend to do is now I say, well, I'm not subject to that. I'm an infinite human being. What do I want to show up? Then I start thinking about what I want to show up. And that transcends your negativity to positivity just like that. Mm-hmm. It really does. And it really does work. But again, like I said, it takes practice. Heck yeah. It doesn't overnight. <laughs> it's not. It really takes practice. And you almost were, you have to actually really catch yourself from, you know, like, or be aware of it that, you know, with what you're feeling. And then you kind of just sit there and think. And then you start changing it. That's what I do sometimes. What I've been doing lately um, with that, when I start feeling that way, you know, like feeling down, negative, I turn to, I think I've mentioned this to you. I've been doing this a lot. And I think my kids sometimes are so tired of hearing it on the radio. I mean, not on the radio, in the car when, I'm, when they're writing with me. Um, so I turn to Alicia Keys' song, this girl is on fire, that song. Mm -hmm. yep. And sometimes when I'm driving, I start to feel a certain way. I immediately would, you know, play that music. And it's on repeat. Then I start singing. I like that. <laughs> you know, that that's that's just, you know, what motivates me and what changes my my attitude on certain things. And what, you know, sometimes just kind of, you know, it helps me like snap out of that situation I'm in or whatever it is that I have in my head. I just, I, you know, I tell myself I, I need to snap out of this. But the good thing is, and I know I give myself a pat on the back sometimes about this, is that I'm aware of it and I'm aware of those thoughts and those feelings. You have to become aware in order to change. I'm, and I was aware of those thoughts. And no one that I can control that or I can create what shows up. Most of the time before this awareness or this conscious work or just believing in myself, I would let these thoughts get out of control like crazy. Like I remember just up until maybe a year ago, I used to always have these imaginations and dreams about being a multimillionaire. Okay. And that means that if I got, let's say $10 million, just to give an example, and I'd be so happy. I can do this, 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 and this, right? I can. Say, get out of debt, buy a brand new car, buy a house, uh, fix my credit, all this stuff. Then I realized, man, you know what? That's created a lot of suffering for me. I don't, I don't like that. 
Because the idea being if I won $10 million, it beats one, meaning I would win it through hitting the lotto. I would yeah, do all these wonderful things. I said, dog, this is creating a lot of suffering. I don't like this. Because the only time I got happy and I feel this excitement and vibrations when I think about winning, okay, for what if I won 10? Okay, what if I won 90? What if I won 300? Right? Because obviously the more money I have, it would bring me more happy to do more things. And I said to myself, wait a minute here. I didn't learn this until just two months ago. It didn't take me $10 million to fix my credit. It didn't take me $10 million to buy a house. It didn't take me $10 million to be happy. It didn't take me $10 million to live a life that I want to live. Everything that I'd done in the last uh, 90, three months ago was fix my credit. Okay. So I was amazed. Uh, so my TransUnion credit score was 727. My experience, 783. And my um, Equifax, sorry. Yeah. My experience, no. My experience, 683. Um, Equifax is 722. I've never seen this in my life, right? So now since credit's good, I locked that sucker up because I'm still my identity, okay? But anyways, it didn't take me uh, a millionaire to fix something, right? What it really took is just, do you want to fix it? Yes. Okay, let's sit down and see how you're going to fix it. That's all it took. It didn't take me being millionaires to get a, find, get a divorce, a person I didn't want to marry. You know what we took is me get on the horn, which is the metaphor for saying get on the phone and start start, start calling attorneys. And what's good is you don't have to have the yellow pages. Remember the yellow pages back in the day, open it, find an mm-hmm. attorney or something like that. Mm-hmm. Just open up Google Chrome and boom, attorneys. And I start calling, I start calling, start being persistent. And then finally, you know, obviously some attorneys they want to okay, before you can talk to attorney, you call some salesperson or paralegal, whatever they they do, attorneys do. Every office is different. And um, they're going to, okay, well, by the way, I said, if you want to talk to Joe, you're going to put $500 down to talk to Joe and it needs to be a $5,000 retainer. It's like, hold on. You haven't even heard what my case is. So I finally found an attorney in Pasadena and they were actually able to work with me. It's like $2,500 down, retainer. They took like 15, 20 minutes to extend my case. And that was free, which is cool. Um, and got that done. So and again, it not take me $10 million to, to get a divorce. I definitely have signed my... Uh, final final paperwork. I submitted it. Um, she said, "Sign her final paperwork and submit hers." Hopefully, next you know, few days or a few months, I am complete this, this dissolution of the marriage and I'm free off my plate. So the point being is that we are in control of what we want to do in our lives. We are totally in control of our mindsets. We're totally in control of the life we want to create. So I fix. I got a house. Fix my credit. Moving. Start a new business. And all did not require $10 million. Just to give an example. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're in control and that everything always comes from within. It has to come from you. You can't sit there and wait. Wait for something to happen. Wait for the changes or wait for you to, to get better and be better. It has to come from within. I was having a conversation with a friend recently about this and about our mental health and you know, I'm going to talk about women because women always has this. We have this thing that we go through, what we call, you know, like the changes Our body goes through changes as we reach a certain age. And it, it's it's funny how I, I brought up, you know, the mental health. Um, I have been reading and I have to give this shout out to to Jay Shetty, this book that I've been reading that he has that he wrote is I I can't stress enough like how wonderful this book is it's such a great read like I'm talking about it right now just gives me goosebumps like it's making me emotional I can't I can't put it down it's like it's one of those books that I'm reading like in the morning or when I have a f- free time, I'm sitting in the car waiting for my my son during his basketball um, practice, and I'm reading that. Um, and at night, before I go to bed, or you know, just it's making a lot of sense to me. And I, at the same time, I could feel what's happening to me when I'm reading that, and when you know, I'm just I, I feel like. Yes, I know, like, you know, let's say one of them is negativity to positivity. It's like, I know that. And I think I'm aware of it. But there's just something sometimes when you read something about it, you it just makes so much more better sense for you. And I think it's also 
it's helping me a lot in some ways and in certain ways with certain situations in my life. And I could feel it, like, I could feel what's happening to me and I could feel how it's affecting me and I could feel that it's it, it's helping me. It's changing me in some ways. That's how this book has an effect in me. And I knew that from before when I first seen it and I read the summary that I really wanted to get this book. It's something about it that I said, I got to have this. When it went on pre-sale, I, I went online and pre-ordered it. And I would check constantly, like, when is it going to ship out? When is it ready? Even though it did say that it'll be ready in September to ship out. But I would still check it because I'm thinking just in case. But it was one of those that I couldn't wait to read. And um, so with that, I was speaking with, you know, I was talking to a friend about, you know, our mental health. And it was when I said something that in the last couple of years, I know that I have changed and I have I've made some changes in my life. And you know, I have to be I have to give myself a lot of credit too for going through it because it's not it's not easy. Um it, it's it was a lot of work. Although I go out and I show my face and I hang out with friends and um and I go to work and you see like a happy Gloria all the time, right? But that happy Gloria that you see from the outside sometimes is going through something deep down. And you know, not a lot of people see that. And I feel like they don't need to know that. They don't need to see that because I'm the one who needs to, to work on that. I don't need to tell everybody that, you know, there, there's something there. They don't need to know all that. And basically, that's what I'm trying to say. So I did some work on myself in the last couple of years. And then when we found IPEC, right, mm -hmm. we went into training. Um, I think that was one of the biggest turnaround for me and a lot of the awareness and a lot of questions that I had was answered. I think because we went, we dug deeper within ourselves and um, a lot came out, a lot, a lot came up for me. And, you know, a lot of the answers, I mean, a lot of the questions I had that I may have always had that I've been ignoring came up and it's been answered and just made sense for me. And um, my friend was telling me, she was saying that, you know, I'm glad that, you know, that worked out for you and that you went through that and that you're going through these changes and that now whatever you're doing is making you happy. And she said, I need, to, I wish I was like that. And I, I, I need to look into bettering my mental health so that I don't feel so bad on my not so good days. Um, she in the last year or so had gone through some changes also in her life and changing the environment, you know, change of environment is still kind of hard for her. And she's still in the stage of adjusting it. And I didn't realize that she still hasn't fully adjusted to it. But it, it's all in the. It, it's all in you. It's all in the head. And and for a while, I was saying is maybe you thought you've, you know, you're. This is you know you're fine, and that that you've fully adjusted already, and that you're happy. Maybe that's what you had. That's what you wanted to think, and you were trying to feel that way. But deep down, you're not. So then we go into we talked about in denial, right? Mm -hmm. So you were in denial about it for a moment. But now you're at a point where you need to really accept it. So after that, you're in denial and you're slowly accepting it. And once you accept that, then that's when you start working on yourself and on, on working on your mental health because you're aware of it now. So what do you do now? And, you know, she's, she's kind of making some changes that will, you know, slowly kind of make, you know, make her happy because 
sometimes, you know, women, when you reach the mid, what they call middle age, what is that, like 40s, whatever it is, um, it's like a roller coaster ride. Their lives is just a roller coaster ride. It's like up and down. You don't know. And and I, I talked to another friend, th- this guy, about this. And apparently, guys go through the same thing. The same thing. So if if a woman, if women has hormones and their hormones supposedly kind of messes them up because it's that imbalance, men has the same thing and they go through the same thing. They just don't talk about it as much as women do or they just don't show it as much as women do. So back to your first thing is that everybody's going through something, right? And Mm-hmm. When you keep suppressing those feelings like you were earlier, they mm-hmm. tend to not go away and they tend to manifest stronger and stronger because you're not dealing with them. And how we hold in our mind, well, you know, I know I'm going through this. No one needs to know. I'm just going to be happy, glo- go, glory. Happy, go, glory. Happy, go, lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Happy, go, lucky, glory. There, that's looking for that. Mm-hmm. Um, what proved to be more suffering was you holding it down, not sharing. Mm-hmm. What proved to be more suffering is that you try and show 100% all the time just because that's how people expect you to show up, but more mm-hmm. or less that's how you expect yourself to show up. See, people don't know what you're going through. Only you do. So you expect yourself to show up 100% at certain way all the time. And that's what proves to me with suffering because you were not feeling your 100% those times and you just want to show up anyways. But at the end, at the moment you showed up, you felt great. But at the end of the day, it still comes back again because you're not dealing with these feelings and these emotions. So they're being more suppressed rather than transcended to something different. And to your last comment, when you're talking about, um, I think, you know, we, we're all so caught up in society about this age. Age, okay, when you get 50, you're going to go through this. When you're 60, you go through this. Menopause, as you do know, can happen at any age. It can happen at 55. It can happen at 39. Uh, impotence for men can happen at 25. It can happen at 20. It can happen at 35. It can happen at 50. It can happen at 60, right? It's just some people go through different things. So there's not a construct to age. You used to get power. Well, I should be going through this at this time. Well, if you had to show up different and be different, like your friend you're explaining about, they don't know they have a choice to, to show up different or be different. And it takes, it takes them a while to actually transcend that. I'm going to show up different just because I have a choice to show up different versus I had expectations in my life to be exactly, let's say her life was okay. I expected to have kids, be married, or better yet, I expected to be not single. And it hasn't changed. It hasn't happened. And they get more down and more depressed because their life hasn't really changed. So what I'm doing is getting very down because it's like, why can't this happen? Why can't it be me? Why can't these things happen in my life? And why hasn't it happened? Well, it hasn't happened because you haven't really changed something inside you. What do you need to change inside yourself? You have to ask yourself some empowering questions, which are, what do I really want? Well, how am I going to go about doing it? And what's the process? That's it. What I transcended in my life here recently was only because I decided to do it. I was still married for 13 years. You're trying to tell me I didn't have time for the last 13 years to get it done? Really, I did. I just didn't do it. So you can transcend these things once you start giving thought less power over you. Just like I said earlier, what, what's, what you tend to hold in mind, what you subject your mind to is what you tend to hold in mind. So as your friend subjects certain things in her mind, she tends to hold that in mind and it tends to manifest outwardly. That's because the body has to relinquish that energy somehow and manifest and they're sleepy, they're tired, they're down, they're depressed because mm-hmm. they're holding a thought in their mind. Or just ignoring it, you know. I think um, for a while, like, you know, she knew that, but she was probably just – just ignoring those feelings because she still keeps trying like you know what it's going to get better it's going to get better um it's not like this it's it's much better than you know what i think it is but once she finally i think kind of slowly started accepting that well you know what this is how it's been now she's realizing it now she's you know making the move of you know i need i need a change I need to do something about this. I need to do something that will make me happier because I can't be like this for too long. It can't, it can't be like this. And, you know, it's true. And back to what I was talking about me is when I'm out there, you know, not showing up and not, you know, not 
showing people how I feel sometimes when deep down I am going through something. It's because I think that, you know, I was, I'm expected when I'm out there, I'm expected to be happy and just the happy-go-lucky kind of type of person because that's how I motivate people. So if I come out there and show them I'm depressed or I'm feeling down today, then the people that are looking up to me or that I'm working with then starts feeling the same way. So how am I supposed to help them and motivate them back up when I'm feeling and I'm feeling a certain way and I show that to them? Then they'll feel the same way also, right? So it's that they're they're feeding off of my energy. And if I give them that type of energy, that's what's going to happen. Like um, I had another conversation with another teacher recently. I We were talking about this, you know, whole situation being in Zoom. And I mean, I just, one day I really just had it. I didn't want to be there. I didn't feel like, gosh, I know some of my students are going to hear this, but I, I'm sure they know. And I think they felt that energy in me through um, the camera or online because I don't know how I was showing up that day, but I felt like they were all just the same thing. And, and I felt like, God, you know, they all decided to to start acting this way. I just, I can't handle it. Then I, I started getting irritated. I don't know if I was irritated at myself or I was irritated at them. Mm-hmm. And I almost just want to say, screw you guys. I don't want to do this right now. I'm out. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's what I had in my head. But they could see that. And so how am I supposed to, you know, act if that's what's going to happen? And of course, I don't want that. And I don't want to show them that. But sometimes it's hard. Yeah, you you hit something right, hit the nail around the head for me just right now. I mean, for the last week, almost four or five days, I'm in white. I'm done. I just want to cancel all my clients and be done with this. This and start packing. I'm done. And it's be boils down to one thing I discussed earlier in our, in our podcast is we didn't set our own boundaries. Like I said before, we are the problem and we are the cause and solution to whatever is ailing us. Be it tired, be it whatever it is, but more importantly, we have to start setting our boundaries. We have to start setting what we can and cannot do, you know. Um, a perfect example. So I reached out to this particular client. Um, what the heck happened here? And uh, back in June of this year. And I said, hey, look, you know, gyms are still closed, uh, especially in Santa Clara County. Um, I'm doing my home gym or virtual training. What do you want to do? He says, well, I think about it. I'm not really working out right now and all this good stuff. Okay, well, all right. That's your choice. You know what? I, I don't push people, right? I let people make their own choices because you have the ability to make your own choice. And then um, – out the blue, it was today, Thursday, Tuesday. He says, "Hey, I went to American Barbell, and you're they hurt your you quit and you're out of business. Can I get my refund back?" So I resp- I took a minute. I had to think about it because I first was like, "Wait a minute!" I reached out to you and I sent you an email too. What was going on? You don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of frustrated already. Like, man, okay, I texted you, you never got back to me, and I sent you an email, never got back to me. So I don't know what's going on. So I get a little frustrated, like, okay, hold on. So I took a few minutes to respond because I'm, I'm busy doing some other work. And then I respond, hey, I said, pretty much, hey, how you doing? I hope all is well with you. Unfortunately, American Barbell um, informed me incorrect. I am not out of business. I'm still training. I'm just doing my garage gym training, virtual training, or app-based training. I'm not going back to American Barbell. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I have three sessions left. How do I finish them? I was like, well, you know, we can do, I said, right now, I'm leaving indefinitely. So... Um, what I was going to do was, okay, well, let me finish this. See, let, me, let me finish this. So I checked my calendar. I'm like, okay, I can put them in a certain date. Hold on. Close my phone. And I'm not setting a boundary. Here I am just, just doing just to do. So I'm solution to my problem. So I just respond back, hey, right now I'm totally full. Because it's not that I'm full. It's that I have to self-care myself too, right? I can't just keep working on stuff when I have things in my plate like accomplish. So it's again, set a boundary. These things you have to do, right? I set a boundary. So I set the boundary. I said, look, you know what? Unfortunately, I can't, you know, um, train you right now because of this. And uh, he says, I said, well, I can do this for you. Once I move, I can set app based training. He's like, man, I'm so depressed right now. I'm down. Um, I, 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 I'm so sad you're leaving. I was really like, nice working with you. You're a man of your word. I like your craft. And immediately, as soon as you said how you felt, that all that frustration when I first got the text went away. Mm-hmm. I actually felt guilty. 
<laughs> it's funny how we start interpreting all these things in our mind without mm-hmm. really having a conversation. Now, obviously, the conversation is not verbal. It's via text, which is okay, you know. But you got to feel through the text. At least how I interpreted it through the text was that he's like, man, I really wish I could still turn on a train with you, man. This really sucks. Mm-hmm. And it's really kind of at this point for everybody, especially in Santa Clara with, with trainers and gyms and all this stuff. Um, you know, I just saw social media. I don't know why American Barbell does this, but uh, since you're a member there, you know that. They're talking about now – making a mandate you can only be in gym 45 minutes to one hour with a mask you have to start you can't be on your cell phone with your own equipment waiting you know all this like wait a minute here dude you're making it hard as it is already okay Don't oh start i haven't heard that yeah because the the, the 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 idiot or whoever in charge of this doesn't do his due diligence and make sure everybody's aware if you don't check instagram you don't know about the post so i saw the post on instagram I, there's not an email sent out there was not a web update his website he's not doing his job Okay, you want to send out these memos, you will update every single avenue from the app to Instagram to Facebook to your thing all simultaneously. So everybody does, no matter what outlet they use, they get the information. Like right now, you don't know the information. I know it. So, but anyways, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a that's a totally different subject about being a business <laughs> owner that I'm not going to get into today because it's, it's about – our emotions right now. I mean, it went from freestyle Thursday to transcending <laughs> levels of emotion, which is great for me. Um, but yeah. it's just my point being about my, my client is that now I felt he really enjoyed me and it's everybody has kind of suffering too with this pandemic and COVID going on and all this stuff. But um, it's all about how we construct things in our mind or the context we give things and we are subjected to those thoughts and those emotions. But once we can, you know, you can interchange thoughts out because you're aware of it. So once you're aware of it, you can make a decision. So we're always aware of our thoughts and how we're feeling, but how, okay, since we're aware of it, how do we transcend that to something more positive? Um, and that's how you do it. You know what? Just oh, Hold on. I'll go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but sometimes that's, that's what I don't like about reading the text because you can, you can, tra- you, the way you read the text sometimes when you get a text, you don't know what they really mean. Or what they really meant to say, you know, it, mm-hmm. to them while they're writing that text or, you know, to you, it, it could be, I don't know, something sincere, but you, the way you um, read that and the way it comes to you could be something different where you could take offense of it. Right. See, that's, that's all about interpretation. So that's why it's always, I believe it or not. Always better have a phone call about something because then it saves a lot of strain. But I just got a text and I was busy at the moment and just went back and forth. So that's really what mm-hmm. happened. Mm. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I, that's that's why sometimes I don't like sending like long texts or when I have to explain something. I'd rather I'd rather just talk <laughs> because I know the way it's going to be um, read. Sometimes it might come out wrong. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be a lot of assumptions, you know. Um, so, yeah, well, it, it depends, I, I guess, also in the situation. But if I know if it's going to be a long one and if it's something that needs to be explained, I'd rather just talk, whether it be on the phone, I mean, over the phone or or um, in person. You know, um, I was going to mention something what I just re- um, what I've been doing um, also is that. I think um, a lot of people out here, and you know this, that I'm more of a night person than a morning person. Mm-hmm. And lately, I've realized too, um, because of how I knew that I needed to to focus on something and change, um, you know, just to make me feel better of everything right now. And then, what I need to focus on is, you know, this project that I'm working on, and I, I don't want to say it yet until it's, you know. We're nowhere near close to getting this done. But um, I have noticed myself, I come home, um, I I take a nap or, you know, I sleep. And then I wake up at a certain time at night and it could be like at 11 o'clock. I'll wake up at 11, let's say. So let's say I end up falling asleep like around 8, 8.30 while watching TV, right? Mm-hmm. And, then I'll, and then I wake up around, all of a sudden I'll wake up, let's say at 11. And I'm wide awake. And then I start working on that project. Like I, I start writing. I start, like I think for some reason, I'm able to focus more and think more. And I, I have so much more to say. Like 
you know, like uh, last night I finished like my first draft on that. I got finally, finally finished it after like a week or so of like trying to figure that out. And um, I submit it to be reviewed. And I was so happy when I hit send last night. I was like, oh my God. I'm done, right? Yeah. But it was like that certain topic. It was one of those, again, like I had to dig deep about me, you know, because it was something that I had gone through when I was younger. And as I've gotten older, how it affected me, um, how it affected my life and how when I, and you know, when you go out there in the real world, how that affected me also. So I had to like make some changes and finally just, like I said, when I say wake up, like you got to snap out of that certain situation or you're not going to get anywhere. Certainly true. So those are things. Yeah. So anyways, I was doing that and I was like, damn, this is what I did. I went through all that, this whole, all this time, all this years in my life. Because had, had I not done that, had I not pushed myself to do that, or had I not realized that I wouldn't have gone past that. So anyways, that was that was just crazy. I, it's just crazy how sometimes our body works and how our mind works. Like you're more of a morning person, so you, you're more focused in the morning. For me, my gosh, it takes me a long time to like for my brain to work in the morning. Like, I feel like I need two shots of espresso <laughs> to, like, <laughs> to, wake, to up. wake up. Yeah. And you know what? Now, after doing more time with clients, people, there people always say, you're easy to wake up in the morning. That's how entrepreneurs do it. That's how successful people do it. No, no, how successful people do it is they find out the time that works best for them and they work around that time. Then you're successful. So this idea of wake up early in the morning, wake up 5 a.m. and wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, get it done, work out this and that. <laughs> That's not, not for everybody. True. It's not for everybody. Let's face it. You hear The Rock say, you hear the guy from Tesla say, all these people say it. Okay. That works for them. It doesn't work for everybody. So once you find out that time of the day, whatever time, if it's midday, morning, noon, night, whatever time it is, once you figure out what works best for you, you hone in on those times so you work more efficient. While those people, they like getting their work done early in the morning, so the rest of the day themselves, hey, again, there's nothing wrong with that. But that works for them. It doesn't work for everybody. It's not a perfect solution for everybody. So in order to achieve success, you find out what works better for myself or Gloria or yourself, what time works better, where do I have the most energy, where I'm most clear, clear and be most effective, and you hone in on those hours or those times or those days, whatever it is, and find out specifically what you want to do and focus on that one. That's how you really accomplish great things in your life. That's what they're really trying to say. It's like, I do these times early in the morning because I, I found it to be very successful for me. You find what works first for, better for you, and you make sure you hone on, in on that success. So thanks again for listening to, I don't know if we should call it Freestyle Thursday or we should call it Transcending the Levels Emotions Thursday, <laughs> but this was a definitely different podcast, and we can see that you and I are definitely going through a lot of emotions right now. Um, a lot of things are happening at a faster pace, and you know, trying to, to, to manage life that's changing too, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. And trying to get a hold of what we want to do, right? Because certain goals that we want to accomplish, but they haven't taken on just yet. And we have to work towards those goals. But it's the fact that we're able to be so beneficial. It's like we learned from IPEC how to change our mindsets and be better. And Because once you change your mindset, you create more energy almost automatically. What you have is negative mindset, negative thoughts. You create zero energy. So thanks again for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivation speaker, and health coach. And another virtual seminar is coming here. So if you missed last time, October 24th, which is a Saturday. So hopefully everybody wants to get some time set aside, 12 to 1 p.m. to figure out how to be better and do better daily. Nice. This is what I like about um, freestyle, freestyle Thursday. I think that... Um, Next time, I don't know. This was just a thought. When we have freestyle like this, you should start freestyling beatboxing. <laughs> you should uh, those are on one that. days when, when I, I, I can work on getting that part of myself better than I will. <laughs> you, you should, that should be a part of it. Maybe I, maybe I do it too. Who knows? I could practice. Um, Why don't you do it first? Then I may follow. Oh, God. <laughs> challenge. Challenge yeah. each other. Uh, but, yeah, so that's what I like about our Freestyle Thursday here is that we come up and just kind of catch up on our week. But sometimes we, we end up having, like, a certain 
topic that we just kind of end up talking about, you know, and, and it's cool. I like it. Anyways, um, yeah, thank you for um, tuning in and listening. And thank you to all our supporters. Um, thank you for your continued support. Um, we really, really appreciate all the support. And I, I, I'm overwhelmed with, with all the support. And yeah, that's it. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Show.